you, Michael. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Tom, Heiko, and uh, Amit for an excellent talk. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, share with you some of the concepts, and uh, Mike is going to follow uh, me with uh, reviewing some of the literature and that I may not be covering. Uh, I do not have any disclosures. Uh, let me uh, take you through uh, some of the basics, because when you're trying to resect, it's important to understand the anatomy of the colon wall, and uh, we are all familiar with this uh, anatomy. And uh, the most important thing is in the mucosa, you have epithelium, uh, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. And uh, muscularis mucosa divides the mucosa, separates the mucosa from submucosa. This is important. And it's also important to realize that colon is a little bit different from other organs in, in that the lymphatics are more prevalent in the deeper parts of the submucosa. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So let me take you through the concepts of a lesion that is limited to the epithelium that as it goes down, uh, what all happens. So uh, here is an M1 or high grade uh, dysplasia or low grade dysplasia, it's a T1 lesion. And then it goes to M2 or M3. And once it penetrates the muscularis mucosa and enters the submucosa, then the game changes. Uh, the reason I say that is lesions that are limited to mucosa, you can actually cut uh, safely by any means, but when lesions go uh, into the submucosa, depending upon how deep they go, you have to be careful whether you can resect it and block with either EMR or ESD, or whether you want to take a piecemeal resection. And the lesions that go into the muscle are beyond the scope of an endoscopist. They need to be managed by surgeons. So this is the most important uh, 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 slide to uh, understand the concepts about which ones you do EMR and which ones you do ESD and which ones you send them for surgery. And I'm going to come back to this slide in my conclusion slide uh, to uh, give you a take home message. Uh, the reason uh, I say that colon actually lends itself for endoscopic resection, unlike uh, esophagus or squamous cell cancer of the esophagus or adenocarcinoma of the esophagus or stomach, is that it gives you a little more uh, depth of penetration uh, compared to squamous cell cancer. For squamous cell cancer, if it goes into the superficial submucosa, they're at higher risk for lymphatic spread. Uh, uh, next comes the gastric cancer, next comes the uh, colon cancer. Uh, in terms of the frequency of lymph node involvement uh, in lesions going into the submucosa, whether it's in the upper one-third, middle one-third, or lower one-third of the submucosa, the lymphatic uh, involvement uh, changes. So here is uh, uh, the risk of nodal invasion. Uh, for SM1 lesions, uh, less than 1%. So these are amenable for resection by endoscopy. When it comes to SM2, the lymph node involvement uh, increases to 6%. And for deep submucosal involvement, without touching the muscularis propria, they go up to 14%. So those lesions probably are not suitable for endoscopic resection. Uh, it also, in the last uh, few years, we have been uh, resecting a lot of large flat lesions that are, are defined as laterally spreading tumors, which can come as granular or non-granular type, and non-granular type have a much higher risk of uh, involving the submucosa, and when it comes to the granular type, the risk of having submucosal involvement is higher uh, under the sessile component of the tumor, especially if there is a mixed component, as you can see here. Uh, I want to summarize uh, a beautiful uh, uh, editorial by uh, Doug Rex. Actually, this is his, his table. And uh, this came in, uh, I think, last month, the GIE, Mike. So I, I encourage all of you to read this. It's a beautiful, uh, beautifully written editorial. Uh, what it tells us is, because there's a lot of debate, you know, should you do EMR or should you do ESD uh, for lesions that can be resected by endoscopy? 
And uh, the Japanese uh, have the largest experience. And if you look at the top three studies, the risk of superficial submucosal invasion in laterally spreading tumors is about 10%. And if you say to yourself, if I can resect 90% of submucous, 90% uh, of laterally spreading tumors, I still save a lot of unnecessary colectomies. So uh, for those 10% which have submucosal involvement, uh, if in case you end up doing a piecemeal resection, you could still say maybe uh, that one, that 10% could have a surgery. So something to keep in mind in terms of the risk of superficial submucosal involvement in laterally spreading tumors. So let me, uh, uh, Amit has covered this uh, in great detail. So we talked about uh, the wall structure. Let's talk about optical diagnosis. Optical diagnosis, uh, thanks to KUDO, and then the group from the US, the NICE classification, and now the recently, the Japanese have come up with further subclassification, the JNET classification, and uh, that article is coming uh, in GIE in the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, something to keep in mind. If you can optically diagnose that there is no cancer, then you can resect that lesion by endoscopy. So uh, when you scan for cancer, uh, when you scan a lesion for cancer, the Site of the lesion, the size of the lesion, and the shape of the lesion make a difference. And uh, in this study from Australia, they have shown that uh, lesions that are in the rectum, uh, lesions that have a depressed uh, uh, 2C type of morphology, uh, lesions that are non-granular, lesions that are granular with a, a large uh, sessile component, and those with a particular type of uh, uh, type 5 CUDA pattern, uh, are likely to harbor submucosal cancer, and those are the ones you may want to avoid uh, doing endoscopic resection. I want to show you some pictures here. This is a large lesion, and as you scan the surface, you can pretty much say this is a benign lesion. So you could go ahead and do the resection. Uh, here is another lesion that was referred as uh, a benign lesion, uh, tubular adenoma from a biopsy, uh, but the biopsy was not done at the right place. And I want, to, want you to keep in mind, whenever you see a lesion and that has a flat area, a barred area, that's where you should focus your biopsy. That's where you'll get cancer. In this lesion, as you can see here, that is the abnormal area. And when we biopsied that area, that came back as cancer. And these are the lesions you should avoid resection. And uh, these are our large lesions. How about this one? This is a medium-sized lesion. It's a sessile serrated adenoma with a flat area. And when you, whenever you have a flat area, you should consider that there's a possibility of cancer. And this too came back as uh, cancer. And uh, this is a smaller lesion. Uh, again, uh, as you can see, there's a flat area. And that came back as uh, cancer. Something to keep in mind before endoscopists uh, uh, go for resection. So the principles of resection, the goals of resection, uh, like uh, Heiko talked about, you know, whether it is small or big, we should completely resect, and we should also be able to send the patient home safely without a major complication. With endoscopic resection, you can basically take care of benign tumors and maybe very superficial early cancers, SM1 type of lesions, and you can achieve cure in those two patients. So this can be achieved by either endoscopic mucosal resection or endoscopic submucosal dissection. Uh, ESD is uh, very well done in the Orient, in Japan, and maybe some other centers in, in uh, Europe. Uh, it's catching up uh, here, but we have a different type of practice. Because of screening, we don't see those large lesions, and maybe we can actually take care of these patients by just EMR in majority of the cases. So the concepts are, if you have cancer, and if it is superficial, it is well differentiated, it doesn't have lymphovascular invasion, whether you do end block resection by EMR or ESD, you actually achieve curative resection. When it comes to piecemeal resection, the pathologist cannot 
uh, is not able to tell you uh, whether the deep margins are positive or negative, and uh, because of that, we end up sending them for surgery. When it comes to benign lesions, when you do piecemeal resection, there is a risk of recurrence. A risk of recurrence has been reported anywhere between 5 to 15 uh, to 20 percent. And but the risk of recurrence has actually been coming down because we are learning a lot more from the Japanese in terms of how to completely resect and also from Michael Burke from Australia. So when you have recurrence, uh, in the past, we used to have trouble in taking care of this recurrence. And uh, whenever we were not able to take care of them, we ended up sending them for surgery. But in the last few years, uh, one thing that has changed the practice is the ability to uh, remove these uh, small recurrences, either with a biopsy or some that are tethered with heart biopsy avulsion. Uh, basically, it's the same thing as a heart biopsy, but instead of the coagulation current, you tent it up and you use endocut eye. It's a cut current and let it cut rather than coagulate. Uh, full thickness resection, you know, there are few case reports, not much has been written, so we don't have much data on that. So one other thing that to keep in mind is uh, as endoscopists uh, in this country, we try to throw the specimen into the formalin jar, but we should take uh, some time to pin the specimen to the cardboard that would help the pathologist to look at the details. Uh, look at the details and tell you, uh, a comp give you a comprehensive report. Uh, is this a well-differentiated cancer or not? Uh, are the margins uh, negative or not? And the depth of uh, penetration, and finally, lymphovascular uh, invasion present or not. A poorly differentiated cancer, presence of lymphovascular invasion, margins positive, or margins more than 1,000 micrometers, they all need to go for surgery for curative resection because we don't know what is happening on the other side in terms of lymphatic spread. So coming back to this picture, uh, as you can see here, lesions that go to the muscle, T2, they should go for surgery. Lesions that go deep into the submucosa uh, should also go to surgery. And lesions that are SM1 or to the left can be removed by endoscopic resection. Uh, you can safely resect up to 20 millimeter lesion with end block snare resection, maybe 25 millimeters if you push, and if you're lucky to align your snare well. But uh, beyond that, it is hard to resect by endoscopy or endoscopic mucosal resection with a snare, and in those cases, uh, using ESD is the way to go. And if you look at that original data that I've shown that Doug Rex has put together, that is basically one in 10 that may end up going for surgery if you practice uh, high quality endoscopic mucosal resection. So something to keep in mind. The reason that is important is when you start ESD practice, there's a high incidence of perforation uh, between 5%, sometimes 10%, and whether it's worth putting these patients through uh, a, a complicated procedures versus you can safely do a large EMR, and those small percentage of patients that have cancer could go for surgery. So something to keep in mind. Uh, this is the uh, chart that uh, Doug has proposed, laterally spreading tumors for end, uh, end block resection. If it is benign, it's cure. If it is superficial submucosal invasion, again, it's cure. If it is deep submucosal invasion because of lymph node spread, you need to send them for surgery. When it comes to piecemeal resection, uh, if it is benign, again, cure. And piecemeal resection, you don't know whether superficial, the submucosal invasion depth is hard to figure out. And uh, because of that, uh, those two subgroups may end up uh, requiring surgery. And uh, because of the time limit, I would like to stop here. And uh, maybe Mike can take uh, on the next session. Thank you.